going on everyone? Welcome back to the shop. This is Alpine Fabrication and today our focus is going to be mounting our rear air shocks. Now if you're an avid Alpine Fab follower, you've probably already noticed a little glimpse of some things that I've done without you. And that's right, I unfortunately have to admit, I did do a little bit of work off camera. I started cutting away the rear fenders and getting some of the rear tailgate trimmed out to be able to fit these tires at maximum stuff. With so much filming on this build, sometimes it's fun to do a little bit of work outside of the camera. So I'm gonna catch you up on what I've done already. You probably noticed that the inner fender wells and the rear cargo area look a little bit different than your normal Samurai. And that's because about three years ago, I tore the whole back half of the Samurai off and I redid all the sheet metal to remove all of the rust and try to tighten up the back end to be a little bit cleaner and a little bit more rust free. Well, fast forwarding to today and we're now cutting all of that work out. Well, most of that work. You can see I chopped out a lot of the inner fender wells and I started even cutting away part of the rear tailgate on the Samurai. With the use of the engine hoist, I was really able to stuff this tire up while drooping out the passenger side, getting the worst case scenario for tire fitment on this rear end. I've got a set of Fox Air Shocks. They have 18 inches of travel and they're two inches in diameter. So we're gonna need to jam these things into the back of the Samurai. Well, on to our work for today. As I mentioned, we need to get these air shocks in. Well, one of the first problems that we're running into on these rear air shocks is that we don't have a lot of room between the tire and the frame of the Samurai. So it's always a balance of trying to be able to have the happy medium between that full extension and that full compression because that whole air shock is gonna swing throughout the travel of suspension. Now the problem that I'm seeing specifically here is that the body of the air shock is either going to hit the tire or it's gonna hit the frame. Now what I could do is I could put some wheel spacers on here I could push that wheel out a little bit further, which would reduce that impact and the interference with the tire itself. I could also run a narrower tire, which is probably what's gonna happen in the future anyways. So what I'm deciding to do is to actually cut out the frame. So I'm gonna go with the approach of Frenching or notching the frame on the back half of the Samurai. Essentially what that means is that I'm gonna cut away a section of it and I'm gonna sink that whole air shock mount into the frame. With that air shock mount sunk into the frame rails, we should stiffen things back up and add a lot more strength. So we're not really gonna compromise on strength with this approach, and we'll likely have to tie in the top of the air shocks together, because they're gonna have a lot of leverage with how tall these air shocks are gonna be. And we don't want those things sw swinging around and twisting our frame and slowly starting to work it so that it starts to fatigue and fail. And we're gonna run with the same style of design of air shock mount that we have on the front of the Samurai and start getting this thing to actually fit and articulate properly.
we've got this mountain and you're probably thinking that thing is massive. And that's because it is. It's coming 21 inches from the top of the frame rail to the eye hole of the bolt for that actual air shock. So it's massive. <laughs> this will definitely not fly as it is staying like this. I'm for sure gonna need some tie-ins to go from either the top of the shock towers together or brace them in an X kind of pattern across to the frame. Ideally, I'm gonna have a cage in here and I could probably just tie them into the cage as well. Now that the tower is in, we need to mount the actual shock inside the tower and then figure out what we're gonna do with the axle housing. Now that we have this passenger side air shock mount installed and the frame notched out entirely, I can confidently say that I really like the design and I think it's going to work well for this build. Not only is it giving me a lot of extra room for the body of the air shock when the suspension is fully extended, but I think it looks pretty nice in the back half of the Samurai, even though it is absolutely monstrous and it's going to be a bit of a challenge to figure out how to close in the back of this cabin of the Samurai. So I'd say it's time to move on to the driver's side, redo this whole process, and finally throw some tires on the back of this axle. Well, 
Well, there we have it. We got both of these air shock mounts in. We have our rear drive shaft mounted up and we've been able to cycle these tires to their full extremes of compression and extension without too much interference. You'll notice there's a little bit of rubbing on one of the tires with the body of the air shock. And I was trying really hard to avoid that, but you win some and you lose some. It's not gonna be that big of a deal. And if I'm not motivated, I might play around with it a little bit more and try to tuck that mount in a little bit further to try to avoid that rubbing. Well, although we solved one problem by getting these air shocks in, we kind of created a second one and that's going to be trying to close in the back of the cabin of the Samurai. I don't want to just have these wheel wells wide open for all the elements of weather to come into the back. And I also need to kind of figure out a storage solution for this as well. I'd really love to hear your comments and see what you think I should do with the back half of the Samurai. This brings us to the end of the video. I appreciate you sticking around and watching this. It's been a really fun build on the back of these air shocks. If you liked what you saw with these rear air shocks and you want to see how I did them on the front, since it's a very similar design, definitely check out this video here. And this is the full build for the front air shocks on the front axle. Thanks again for sticking around everyone. And we'll see you next time on Alpine Fabrication. <music>